All right, so in the first half of today's notes, we spent time proving how numbers can make lines parallel. Now we're going to go backwards. Lines are parallel if corresponding angles are congruent, if alternating angles are congruent, and if same side angles are supplementary. So the question becomes, how do I look at a set of four lines and determine which two lines are parallel? It's actually really simple. All you have to do is fill out the angles for the whole picture. If this one's 80, this one's 80. 80, 110, 75. Now, that might not always give us enough information. This time it does, because we can now tell by looking that A is parallel to D. In question two, it becomes a little bit more complex because when we take the numbers across vertically, we don't know right off the bat which one matches up because none of the four match up, although you should. Because it comes back to the rule we just talked about. If they're not congruent, then the two that are same side have to add up to equal 180. Well, what two lines would make 180? B and C. So again, you can either prove lines are parallel by finding two that are equal to each other or by finding two that add up to 180. And in that case, B and C add up to 180. And so, again, this is the best way. Now, if you're one of those people who likes to be confident, just remember a straight line has 180 degrees in it. And so you could make your case by putting in all of the information. All right. I give you a set of lines. You're going to tell me if they're parallel, and then you have to give me a reason. So let's look at quite example three. And it gives me two and three. And it says that two is supplementary to three. Perfect. So then what two lines are parallel because of 2 and 3? 2 touches A and L. 3 touches L and B. So what two lines are parallel? Well, A is parallel to B. And as we learn in Lesson 1, it's because 2 and 3 are same side and their interior. Okay? And that's how you write out your reason. You, you put A is parallel to B and you put same side interior. The second one says 1 is congruent to 3. Well, here's 1 and here's 3. Again, what two lines are parallel because of 1 and 3? Well, we don't touch M, so M's not involved. It's A is parallel to B. And the reason is because 1 and 3 are corresponding. All right. I want you guys to try 5 through 12. And remember, use the ones you know. Same side interior, same side exterior, alternating interior, alternating exterior, and corresponding. If it's not one of those five things, nothing is parallel. Vertical doesn't work. None doesn't work. No lines will be parallel unless you have one of those five things. So pause the video, try 5 through 12. When you unpause, the answers will be there, and we'll talk about them. Okay, so hopefully you were able to get answers. For number 5, we had 6 and 7. That's line A and B, and it's because 6 and 7 are same side interior. For 6, 9 and 12, I told you, vertical proves nothing. For 7, 7 and 9, they don't work together. It's two different lines, proves nothing. 8, L and M, because 2 and 10 are corresponding. And I know you're like, well, wait a minute, how is it corresponding? Well, if I turn it this way, 2 is the exact same angle as 10. Number 9, A is parallel to B because of alternating exterior, so 1 and 8. 
Number 10, A is parallel to B because 8 and 6 are corresponding. Number 11, I'm going to talk about this one in class. Hopefully you got none. Because if 7 was none, then 11 should be none. But I'm actually going to show you the most correct answer, and I'm going to do that in class. 12, L is parallel to M because 5 and 10 are alternating interior. Now, I know you're like, wait a minute, 5 is exterior, but not when we turn it this way. 5 and 10 are both inside the parallel lines L and M. Okay, just like we talked about in the first half, you can prove that lines are parallel by two choices again. Do I set them equal? Or do I add them up? And then set them equal to 180. Well, what do you think is going to happen here? They're equal. Set them equal. What do you think is going to happen here? They're equal. Set them equal. And solve. It's that simple. If the 7x plus 35 would have been here, then you would have added them up. But since they're congruent, you go ahead and put them to set them equal to each other, solve for x. And then you can figure out the angle measures. All right, this wraps up day two. Any questions, come see me or Ms. Robinson, and we will uh, give you guys some help out. But it's pretty, pretty simplistic. We're still using the stuff from day one of this unit and the stuff we've learned all through unit one and unit two about how to solve for congruent measures.